Today, we will recap the movie Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. After the first part of the film, the monkey flu epidemic caused by the ALZ-113 compound has spread throughout the world. Disease, war, and riots have put humanity on the brink of extinction, with only a few individuals possessing a natural immunity to this pandemic. More terrifying still is the clash with the monkeys, not just a handful, but an entire kingdom of large and extremely intelligent animals. The opening of the movie features a scene of the monkeys conducting large-scale hunts. The monkey king, Caesar, is teaching his son how to hunt for a herd of animals. Caesar raises his hand, causing the herd of antelopes to panic and flee. A head-on collision with Koba causes the animals to fall into a trap set by the monkeys. However, faced with death, the herd is in a state of extreme panic and repeatedly crashes into Caesar's army. Caesar personally throws a tree, causing an antelope to fall to the ground. At that moment, he realizes the impending danger and warns his son to be careful. Soon after, Blue Eyes is attacked by an old bear. Caesar leaps into action to save his son, but despite his efforts, he cannot overpower the large bear. Suddenly, Koba jumps down from above and plunges a huge spear into the bear. Caesar expresses his gratitude to Koba for his help and reminds his son to think before acting. After the hunt, the monkeys return on horseback to settle at a headquarters upstream of the dam. The monkey civilization has progressed significantly. Maurice now serves as an English teacher, and the baby monkeys, possessing the A113 gene, are extremely intelligent. Within a year, they can read and write like normal humans, quickly exceeding human capabilities. Today, Caesar's wife has given birth to another son. He calls Blue Eyes to meet his new brother, bringing their family together. Later, Caesar discusses his feelings with strategist Maurice, reflecting on how far the monkey species has come. Despite this progress, he admits that he sometimes still thinks about humans, even though they may be nearly extinct. Later, while scouting in the forest, Blue Eyes and Ash, the son of the Super Monkey Rocket, suddenly encounter a human. In an attempt to defend himself, the human shoots and kills Ash. Upon hearing the gunshot, the remaining group rushes to provide support. The situation becomes tense as Rocket anxiously sees his son shot. Caesar stands on a large rock, commanding the monkeys to stay calm. Malcolm, the leader of the human group, explains to Caesar that they mean no harm, leading everyone to lower their weapons. The compassionate Monkey King shouts for the humans to leave quickly, and the group flees in fear. Caesar then instructs his lieutenant Koba to follow the trail of the humans. Unbeknownst to Malcolm, their mistake will later ignite a massive war. They took the leaders of the group of victims to a hidden base deep in the city. The bald guy was still scared because the apes could talk and had weapons, spears, he was afraid that they would track and kill all the humans. Finally their car arrived at the base in a large tower, the group was happy to have arrived safely, but did not know that Koba and his henchmen had also discovered this place. The malicious Koba declares, attack the humans before they destroy the apes. They shot your son rocket. However, Caesar warns that declaring war could lead to losing everything they have built, and urges the apes to consider the future of their species. Yet Koba, having been abused by humans in the past, still seeks to demonstrate his strength. Therefore, despite his reservations, Caesar agrees to march to the human headquarters. The next morning, the apes travel toward the city, with Caesar riding a majestic war horse, resembling a king. The humans feel extremely frightened by this display. However, the monkeys come only to negotiate, not to incite war. Malcolm bravely stepped forward to negotiate with the Monkey King Caesar. The Monkey King declared that the monkeys did not want war. But if forced, they would respond with force if the humans did not know what was good for them and never intended to invade the monkey territory. Then he returned the bag to Malcolm, and the whole group of monkeys returned home. Koba glares at Malcolm, seemingly wanting to attack everyone present, before silently following Caesar away, leaving the humans in a state of surprise, confusion, and anxiety. It appears as though the crowd of humans has lost their will upon witnessing the monkeys earlier. The superior species must now bow to the animals. Dreyfus said the situation was urgent. It was now time to capture the upstream dam to restart the power supply for the city. The price of gasoline was rising, so the remaining energy could only be used for two weeks. Dreyfus decided to challenge the monkey army, but Malcolm asked for three days to negotiate with the monkey king. If successful, he would avoid unnecessary bloodshed. Dreyfus stated that if there was no response in three days, 
he would command the humans to launch a total attack. Malcolm immediately prepared his belongings to leave the next morning. Although he knew it was dangerous, he had to try because if he didn't, war would be inevitable. His wife and children insisted on seeing him off. Malcolm drove into the pouring rain forest, leading the group behind and walking into the forest alone. Not long after arriving in the monkey's territory, Malcolm was quickly discovered by a large chimpanzee, who shouted and escorted him to meet Caesar. The civil and military officials were all present. Malcolm was forced to kneel before the monkey king. He begged Caesar to let him speak, but Koba shouted that humans were a bunch of liars. Then he raised his spear and threatened to finish Malcolm off on the spot. Caesar silently raised his hand to signal him to stop. Malcolm said he wanted to show the monkey king something at the upstream dam. He led Caesar to the nearby hydroelectric dam and explained that this dam was the only chance to save humans from starvation. He begged Caesar to allow humans to come there to restart the power source. The monkey king agreed on the condition that humans had to give them all their guns to destroy. That night, poor Ash the monkey was tired from destroying guns. Koba was worried that electricity would make humans more dangerous, and he just wanted to kill all humans while they were still in their infancy. Caesar explained that humans should not be pushed into a corner. Koba screamed because humans had mistreated him. But then Caesar looked at him seriously, making him scared. However, Koba began to contemplate betrayal. Caesar told his son that Koba was infected with hatred for humans, and in fact, humans also had the same worries as Koba. That night, Officer, a member of the group, said that apes were not like humans because they could adapt to the environment better. Carver, who shot Ash at the beginning of the movie, also recalled the disease that took away Malcolm and Ali's relatives. The next morning, Maurice came to Malcolm's son's tent. The monkey king, Caesar, asked his advisor about Koba's absence. Meanwhile, Koba secretly monitored the humans and realized that they were busy preparing weapons. Koba led his trusted followers to break into the ammunition depot, wondering why humans invested so much in ammunition. While having fun, he was caught red-handed by humans. Koba pretended to be silly and danced in front of them. The two soldiers saw that and chased Koba away. On this side, Malcolm's group entered the hydroelectric dam, but they encountered new difficulties. When detonating the generator, the hydroelectric dam was too old and collapsed, trapping one of the group members. Caesar put aside all hatred and saved his life. Caesar's youngest son jumped down to play with Malcolm's group. The boy was so cute that he was very welcomed. It seemed that through this, the connection between humans and apes would take a step forward, but he didn't know what to do and hid a gun inside the suitcase which was accidentally discovered by Caesar's youngest son. He panicked and grabbed the gun to threaten blue eyes. Caesar quickly threw him down, then picked up the gun from the ground and threw it into the lake. Disappointed, Caesar chased Malcolm's group away. At this time, the wife of the monkey king Caesar had a bad cold. Coincidentally, Malcolm's wife was a doctor who brought antibiotics. So Caesar allowed Malcolm's team to stay for a day to start the hydroelectric power plant and promised to bring the monkeys to help everyone. However, Malcolm had to kick that ball bastard out right away. At the same time, Koba returned. Seeing the monkeys helping humans, he immediately ran to the hydroelectric dam to cause trouble. Koba knocked Malcolm's son down, but he still couldn't see the monkey king Caesar anywhere. He angrily shouted for Caesar to come and talk to him immediately. Koba thought that Caesar's help for humans would put chimpanzees in danger. At the peak of his anger, Koba accused Caesar of loving humans more than monkeys maybe even more than his own children. The Monkey King was furious and slapped Koba repeatedly. After being beaten by Caesar, Koba stopped being rude. Caesar said that monkeys never kill each other and forgave Koba for his rudeness. But it was this that made Koba determined to rebel. Blue Eyes also began to avoid his father because of this. The monkeys also did not dare to mention the number of guns the humans possessed. Koba came to Blue Eyes side and pretended to be afraid that the humans would harm Caesar. The next morning, Malcolm's son gave Maurice a book as a souvenir and thanked him for helping them. Malcolm and his wife were very happy to see that their son knew how to love the monkeys. On the other side, two soldiers were still practicing shooting at the ammunition depot. Koba also came to explore, maintaining a naive appearance that did not arouse suspicion. He easily won the hearts of the two soldiers. Even more daringly, he grabbed a bottle of wine and drank with them. Koba saw that his plan had succeeded. He stole one soldier's gun, shot and killed him, and then, with a sinister look, continued to shoot the other soldier dead. Now, Koba's ambition could not be stopped. 
he returned to the forest and killed a bald man in the car. At the same time, the hydroelectric power plant was successfully activated, and Caesar happily shook hands with Malcolm. Caesar then led the group to Tuileen Dawn to look at the city, where light had returned to the human city. But they had not been happy for long when disaster was about to strike. Koba secretly burned down Caesar's house, and then, stealthily carried a gun to assassinate him from behind. Caesar was shot, causing the monkeys to panic. Blue Eyes picked up the gun and brought it to Koba. Koba stood up and declared that it was the humans who killed Caesar and they burned down the Monkey King's house. Maurice saw this and secretly led Malcolm's group to escape. Koba incited the monkeys to attack the humans to avenge their king. His plan was almost complete to usurp the leadership position. He commanded his followers to lead the monkey army in an attack on the human base, hugging Blue Eyes and promising to avenge Blue Eyes' father. Tens of thousands of monkeys charged toward the city. Malcolm's group was lucky to hide in a bush and narrowly escape death. Meanwhile, the humans were still celebrating their newfound electricity, unaware that disaster was imminent. Dreyfus looked at the iPad, remembering the days when his family was happy before the monkey play took them away. Outside, the monkey army led by Koba's followers attacked the gate. They were very clever and took over the armory, equipping each monkey with a gun. Koba even personally chose a gun for Blue Eyes to avenge his father. On the other side, the guards ran back to report to Dreyfus that the ammunition depot had fallen. Dreyfus quickly pressed the alarm and gathered all the villagers at the second armory to form a defense line. He picked up the loudspeaker to reassure the troops, determined to fight to the death to protect the last remnants of humanity. At the same time, the monkeys led by Koba rushed in, running wildly and firing bullets into the human defense line. Dreyfus was determined not to give in to the monkeys. The two sides continued to engage in a fierce battle. Koba hated the humans, who had dissected him before, and did not hesitate to spill the blood of monkeys, to use as a springboard to advance and slaughter the miserable humans. He urged the monkeys to fight for their lives as they moved forward. Above, Dreyfus and the soldiers continuously responded. The unprepared monkeys were hit by bullets and lay scattered on the ground. Blue Eyes realized that his father was right. War would lead to the monkeys to Maya's. Seeing the situation worsening for the monkeys, Koba kicked the monkey next to him down to steal a horse. Koba picked up a gun and fired continuously with both hands, charging straight into the front line with the spirit of a professional assassin. Despite his reckless attitude, the humans had to respect him somewhat. The monkey army regained their spirit and rushed forward to continue fighting, but the situation was precarious. Dreyfus carried a large gun to shoot at the gas tank and the explosion created a shield to block the monkeys from attacking. Koba, however, did not give up, sending the monkey army to climb the electric wire and infiltrate the human defenses. Thanks to this, the human firepower was dispersed, allowing the monkeys to break through the defense line and rush inside. Koba, a brave leader, rode his horse through the fire and led the charge. It seemed like the monkeys were about to break the defense line when suddenly there was a loud bang. Koba turned around and saw a tank attacking from behind. Koba did not expect human a brave and indomitable. On the tank, the soldier kept raining bullets on the monkeys. Koba, in a frenzy, rode his horse and jumped up to kill the man holding the machine gun. Seeing that this was a good tool, Koba took control of the tank and used it to crash the gate of the defense line. The monkey army rushed in and slaughtered innocent people. Professor Dreyfus had to withdraw all his soldiers and wait for a counterattack. Just like that, the last line was broken in less than an hour. By the next morning, humans had become prisoners of the monkeys. While the monkey army was sweeping away every life, one person dared to take up arms to fight back. However, this person was unfortunate enough to encounter Koba, who snatched the iron rod and threw it to Ash, telling Ash to deal with this individual. However, Rocket Sun protested, saying that this was not what Caesar wanted. Without saying a word, Koba lifted Ash onto his shoulder, and threw him straight down the stairs. After that, he asserted his position as the leader of the monkeys. Meanwhile, Malcolm's family crept down the mountain. They realized that Caesar had been seriously wounded but was still alive, and they quickly placed the monkey king in the car for emergency treatment. Caesar indicated that Koba was responsible for his injuries. Shortly after, Koba captured all the humans and locked them in cages like monkeys. The monkeys loyal to Caesar were also chained. Caesar's son felt helpless and could do nothing. 
the monkey strategist Maurice signaled Blue Eyes to protect himself. At the same time, Malcolm's car brought Caesar back to his old house. Malcolm saw Caesar as a friend and carefully placed him in a chair. There, he discovered a photo of Caesar as a child. Ellie needed surgery to save Caesar, but unfortunately, there was no medical equipment available. Seeing this, Malcolm risked his life to enter the city through the subway, and he tried to gather all the necessary medical supplies into his backpack. Looking outside, the monkeys were hunting and capturing the people as prisoners. This situation could be said to be extremely dangerous. If they discovered Malcolm, he would definitely not survive. Malcolm tried to escape, but the monkeys were everywhere. Luckily, he was quick enough to avoid them. Just when he thought he was safe, Malcolm was spotted by blue eyes. Fortunately, this monkey had a kind heart like his father's, so he turned and left. Malcolm told Blue Eyes that Blue Eyes' father was still alive. Immediately, Blue Eyes followed Malcolm. When Blue Eyes met his father and saw the wound on his body, he became angry with the entire Malcolm family. But his father explained that it was Koba who had done this. Blue Eyes told his father that his mother and younger brother were safe, but everyone had almost obeyed Koba. That night, when his health improved, Caesar went to his room to watch a video with Will from when he was young. Caesar smiled when the film ended, Malcolm appeared behind Caesar. The kind guy Malcolm asked who the person in the film was, Caesar said that he was a good man, like Malcolm. The next day, strategist Maurice saw the signal from the monkey king Caesar. On the bus, the loyal monkeys immediately understood that Caesar was still alive. That night, Caesar's loyal monkeys rioted. Caesar's loyal monkeys grabbed Koba's henchmen and dragged them tightly in the car. Maurice ordered his men to flip the car, killing all of Koba's monkeys. Blue Eyes saw this and ran to open the door free Caesar's loyal monkeys. Then he provided cover fire for the monkeys and humans, so they could leave safely and led these monkeys to meet Caesar immediately. But everyone needs to leave because Koba is coming. Malcolm carefully led the monkeys through the tunnel. While on the way, he heard gunshots blocking the road ahead. So Malcolm decided to split the group into two. The monkeys followed Caesar to climb to the surface, and then led his men straight to the tower ahead. Malcolm knew that the resistance was led by Professor Dreyfus. Dreyfus ordered his men to install extremely powerful C4 explosives, determined to destroy all the monkeys. Malcolm found this too cruel to the apes, and decided to take action. He took out a gun and threatened Dreyfus, insisting that they must give the ape king Caesar a chance. At this time, Caesar was still weak, making it extremely difficult to climb the tower. The monkeys saw their king, Caesar, and began to gather around him. Koba, up above, realized that something was unusual as Caesar had managed to climb up. The monkey king slowly walked forward to confront the traitor Koba. Koba repeated the monkey's rules, stating that the strongest would be the leader. He discarded his gun and rushed at Caesar. Although seriously injured, Caesar maintained his kingly demeanor he embraced the traitor and threw him down, causing the scaffolding below to collapse and wounding Koba in the abdomen. Koba played dirty, pulling out an iron bar to use as a weapon and continuing his assault on Caesar. The Monkey King also picked up an iron plate as a shield, but Koba, enraged, smashed Caesar's shield. Despite this, Caesar still held feelings for his comrades, who had faced life and death alongside him. So he attempted to persuade Koba to stop fighting. However, Koba became even angrier and continued to beat Caesar. With no choice but to kill the traitor, Caesar suddenly charged forward and struck Koba's wound, quickly gaining the upper hand. Koba became dizzy and stunned with pain. Resorting to dirty tactics once more, Koba kicked down the scaffolding. In a flash, Caesar grabbed an iron chain and counterattacked. Below, Dreyfus knew he could not negotiate with Malcolm, so he grabbed the wire, pressed the detonator, and prepared to die with the monkeys. The fierce fire below surged upward, threatening to engulf everything, and the tower shook violently. The Monkey King, Caesar, managed to swing the chain and land safely inside. But it seemed that the tower would collapse sooner or later. Koba narrowly escaped death. With many monkeys having died in the recent explosion, Caesar looked at his kind lying around and felt so mercy. He personally rescued injured members from under the pile of scrap iron. Koba also rose from the debris wielding the iron bar for his comrades while secretly reaching for the gun. He then lowered the iron bar back to its original position. Sinisterly, Koba aimed his gun and shot at Caesar. Several loyal monkeys rushed out to take the bullets, saving their king. Caesar threw a large bundle of steel directly at the traitor. 
Koba continued to fire wildly, determined to kill Caesar at all costs. In a fit of rage, Caesar charged straight at Koba. The traitor found himself in a perilous situation, claiming that monkeys should not kill each other, and that they must love one another, he promised to change. However, Caesar could not forgive Koba's crimes, and allowed the traitor to fall from above. Caesar commanding his subjects to retreat from the precarious tower. Below, Caesar accidentally meets Malcolm again. At this moment, Malcolm urged Caesar to leave immediately, as reinforcements were on the way. The Monkey King understood that after the recent massacre, war between the two species was inevitable. Nevertheless, as their leader, he vowed to lead the monkeys to fight to the end. Caesar embraced his kind friend, promising that if they had the chance in the future, they would become sworn brothers. He then returned to reunite with his small family. After the battle, the monkey troops had not suffered much damage. Everyone knelt at the feet of their king, Caesar, ready for the impending conflict between humans and apes. The movie ends here Koba, the traitor, paying a heavy price for his actions. However, Monkey's Planet poses a significant threat to humans. Part 3 promises to be the most dramatic installment of the Planet of the Apes series. Will humans launch a war of survival against the apes? Will the Monkey King, Caesar, have the strength to protect his species? Please watch Part 3 with me. Thank you very much for your support in helping the channel develop to this point. If you found this interesting, please give a like and leave a comment about this movie, and especially subscribe to the channel to follow my latest movie summaries. See you again, dear friends.